Hi, it's Barry Neal here. I'm often asked the question by other therapists, what do you think the biggest mistake is that therapists make when working with their clients? Um, and uh, well, it's kind of a difficult question to answer, but if we're talking about behavioral change, like changing habits, such as gambling, smoking, um, food problems, um, cocaine, those sorts of things, I think the number one mistake that many therapists make is assuming that just because the person pays their money and just because they turn up for their appointment that they're motivated enough to stop. I think that's a mistake because in my mind you absolutely know they're not motivated enough to stop. How can we know that? Well simply because the fact that they turned up for a session because here's the thing if they were 100% motivated right now to change their behaviors why would they need you? So just because a client turns up, just because they pay their money, does not mean they're motivated enough to change their behavior. Now, this doesn't apply if we're talking about people with anxiety or PTSD or if they've been through um, abuse and things like that. We're not gonna use this method with those people. This is for the people who could change, but they don't. You know, who could stop drinking, who could lose weight, who could stop smoking, who could stop gambling, but are just not doing it. Why? Because right now they're associating pain to changing and pleasure to keep on doing what they're doing. We need to reverse that. And what we need to do is to associate massive pain to continuing their action and pleasure to changing. When we change that, everything changes. You've probably heard that um, we're motivated by pain or pleasure, and this is true. I mean, obviously there'll be variables about that, and some people are far more motivated by pain, and some people are far more motivated by pleasure. And it's a good idea to find out what motivates your clients and use what was already motivating them, uh, and then ramp that up. But for the most part, if people are coming to see you, they're motivated by pain. They, they got to the point in their life where they, they want to stop, something's happened, and they want to change their life. But at that point, they're not motivated enough. So what we need to do is to change the association. We need to get them associated to massive pain to continuing that action and pleasure to changing. If we do that, 90% of our work is done and whatever technique you do after that is really just um, window dressing because a lot of it is down to this motivation. So let's look at how we can do that. So let's say you've got a client come in for weight loss or smoking or alcohol, cocaine, gambling, something like that. We wanna start finding out, step one, identify what are their limiting beliefs about this? What are their excuses? Smokers, for example, they're going to have some limiting beliefs about why they still smoke. Well, it helps me relax. Um, it helps me deal with stress. I don't have any willpower. All this sort of thing. Weight loss people, they'll come up with things. Well, I've got a slow metabolism. I've got big bones. Um, they, I don't have any willpower. Um, I'm too busy. My, ch I, I, I can't. Um, I don't have time to exercise because of my kids. There'll be loads of these limiting beliefs. So the first step we want to do is start to identify those limiting beliefs. What is belief number one? What is the consequence in your life for having this belief? Because so we want to be asking these questions. We want to be taking notes. We want to be listening to what, is, what are the pain points? What are the hot buttons, the words, the adjectives that you lean on um, that seem to have the emotion, the most emotional impact, the most semantically packed words. So we want to find out what these beliefs are. And there could be two, three, four or five of them that are using for excuses. So we want to find those out. Then what we want to do is we want to start putting some real pain on these beliefs because it's these beliefs that are holding them back. So we want to start asking them questions. What are these beliefs cost you and why? So what are these beliefs cost you and why? And we want them started off, I want you to feel the weight of these beliefs and in your body, and then I'm gonna ask you some questions. Okay, how much 
have these beliefs cost you in your life? What have they cost you? What have they cost you financially? What have they cost you in your health? What have they cost you in your career? What have they cost you in your relationships? Start getting them associating to those particular pain points. Now question number two, what have you lost as a direct result of these beliefs? You know, what have you lost as a direct result of these beliefs? So thinking about, you know, someone who may be overweight, they may have lost relationships, they may have lost um, the ability to do things that they want to do, that they love, like maybe some people, they got too overweight to do horse riding or any particular sport type thing, and, and they no longer do that. They may have lost relationships, all those sorts of things. And again, if it's, if it's gambling, we want to find them. What have they lost as a result of these beliefs? How does that make you feel? So we want to get them in touch with these feelings. What does that make you feel? Again, take notes of whatever they're saying, because we're going to use those. Next question. How many ways have you cheated yourself by having these beliefs? You know, start thinking about how they, what are the ways they've cheated themselves? Because you know what? They know that they're cheating themselves. They know that they've just been making a bunch of excuses. So we want them to get them to associate that. So again, once they've got that, how does that make you feel? How, how has having these uh, beliefs affected your relationships? How has it affected your career? What unpleasant emotions do you feel on a daily basis as a direct result of these beliefs? of this behavior. Really want to get them associated and join the dots together so that they can really feel this pain. And I know this doesn't sound very pleasant, but we've got, for their sake, we have got to associate them to the pain to change this. How many things have you not even attempted in your life as a result of these beliefs and this behavior? You know, for some people, again, it could be that they, they've always wanted to do things that like maybe they wanted to dance or maybe they wanted to, to exercise or maybe they wanted to go swimming or maybe they wanted to learn horse riding. Maybe they wanted to do all these things, but because they're overweight or because they're drinking, they've not been doing that. So we want to get them. What have they not even attempted in their life as a result of that? And then we want to ask them, how absolutely awful does this make you feel? And we want to get them really associated to this pain. And we might even ask them, okay, so like, what is the, the worst thing that could happen as a result of doing this? And we're going to take note of this. So for example, they may say, well, you know, the worst thing that could happen is that I die and I never get to see my, my little girl get married. Well, we're going to take that. And let's say they're coming in for smoking. What we're going to do is going to have them mentally rehearse. Think about having a cigarette. And now just imagine this thought. that You're never going to be there to see your little girl get married and feel the pain. But, you know, you had a cigarette. That was worth it, wasn't it? So we're going to take that pain and attach it to the behavior. So what we want to do is to really get these pain points. Now, all this is happening in the present, but that's not enough. We need to get this out in the future so that they really start to think of the future pain. You know the old idea that the alcoholics have to hit rock bottom before they change? Well, maybe they do, maybe they don't. Maybe they just need to imagine what rock bottom is like and then they can change. So what we want to do is to associate them to the future. Okay, so if we've got done all this, how much more will this cost you in five years? Five years from now, how much more pain are you going to be in? How many more things are you going to miss out on? Look in the mirror. How do you look? So for the weight loss clients, you know, five years from now, how much heavier are you going to be? Think about this. I mean, a person can easily gain a pound a week. I know about you, but I've gained a pound a week before. Not even noticed it. What would happen if you continue to gain a pound a week for just even a year? That's 52 pounds heavier in a year. You know, if they start looking in the mirror, seeing themselves, you know, 50 pounds, 100 pounds heavier, look in the mirror, how do you look? You know, do you look older? You know, if they continue to smoke, we all know that smoking is one of the primary causes of premature aging. If you have the person 
looking in the mirror five years from now, they continue to smoke. Notice how many more wrinkles they have. Notice how older they look, how much more gray hairs they have, how many more wrinkles, you know, all these things. We want to get them really on this pain. How many more regrets will you have? What will you have given up on? What will you have lost as a result of this? Is this a price you're willing to pay? What does this cost you in your relationships, your career, your health? Is this a price you're willing to pay to just continue to suck on this stupid piece of paper with some old weeds in it? Is that what you want? Really, we want to ramp this up. And again, we want to find these pain points. So if we ask the question, you know, what's the worst thing that can happen? And they come up with this scenario. Take that scenario. And then when we're doing the hypnosis work, we get them into the context where the problem happens. And maybe they're starting to think about doing that behavior. And then we have this... This pain hit them fairly in the face and suddenly they go, ah, and that can be enough to shift them. And what we're then going to do is to direct them towards the pleasure side. But we really want to associate pain to the behavior. So we're going to take all this and use it in the hypnosis session to associate this massive pain to the thought of having that, doing that behavior and condition that in. So that just the thought of it makes them go, ah. So I hope that makes sense. We want to interrupt the normal pattern that they're normally doing and associate massive pain to continuing to do that behavior. So this is what we want to do. And then, as I said right at the beginning, we're motivated by pain or pleasure. So we don't want to just leave them in pain. We want to then direct them towards pleasure. Okay, so why do you want to make this change? What will that do for you? You know, how will your whole life improve if you lose this weight? How will your whole life improve when you stop smoking today? What will that enable you to do? How much more energy you're going to have? You know, imagine it's a year from now and you've, you know, you changed all your eating habits and you're now the size and shape you want to be. How's that going to feel? What's it going to feel like when you go into a clothes shop and you can buy anything you want and you can wear it and feel comfortable in it and know you look good in We want to start attaching build up the pleasure side of it as well now because again what we're going to do is we're going to take all that pleasure and the positive side of it and in the hypnosis process once we've interrupted the pattern given them plain we want to then redirect them into experiencing pleasure and having pleasure for changing their eating habits saying no to certain things and we want to use this so we want to create a kind of like push pull so I think it's really important that right in the beginning, in the first session, and if you need to, in other sessions as well, use this process to keep your clients motivated. Again, I think it's such a big mistake to just think, well, the clients come in to stop smoking, or they come in to lose weight, they come in to stop gambling, they come in to stop out using alcohol, they come in for all these things. Uh, they must be motivated. No, they're not. They're really not. You have to ramp up that motivation and you have to associate massive pain to continuing the process, to continue that habit and pleasure to stopping it. And you'll often see this with smokers. I mean, if you say, to, if a smoker comes into your office and you look down the road and you can see that person having their last cigarette, you're pretty much guaranteed that they are associating pain to stopping because they're having their last, oh, I've got a last cigarette. Well, we want to attach pain to that, pain to the thought of smoking. So we want to reverse the process. So when they come in, they're going to be th attaching pain to stopping and pleasure to carry on doing what they're doing because that's why they're still doing it. We want to flip that so that we associate massive pain to continuing that behavior and pleasure to making the change. We condition that in over and over and over again, then they change and they stay changed and they get the life that they want. So I hope this gives you some ideas. And I say use the eyes, make notes of whatever the, the words they use, the keywords that they use, the adjectives they use. Use that in your hypnosis process. This makes this so much powerful than just buying some script off the internet and reading it out to them because this is going to be tailored to them. And you're going to use that pain and attach it to the behavior and then take the pleasure and attach it to the change and condition it in. You'll, you'll be so light years ahead of so many therapists if you do that. So remember, 
If you like this video, please like it and then subscribe because there's loads more videos in these series. And if you have any questions, drop me a line, um, drop me an email. I'll be glad to help you if I can. So I hope to see you one day. Meanwhile, remember to like and subscribe the video. Thank you.